Welcome to another day off. This is video two on the series of turning a $500 junker into a daily driver. We have this 2001 BMW 330i and last video we diagnosed some coolant leaks as well as the check engine light that was related to some vacuum leaks we had in the intake. So today we're going to be pulling the intake manifold off, doing a complete reseal as well as replacing the water pipes that run underneath the intake and doing all of the coolant hoses while we still have it out. So let's get cracking. Now magnetic sockets are always super handy for this. However, if you do not have one, you can use a small dollop of silicone grease on the inside of the socket, or you can use a small little bit of adhesive like butyl tape or something just to put it on the inside of that socket wall that way when you do get that nut off the stud like I did here it will not fall out and you will not go chasing it around the engine bay So the manifold's getting loose, we got the nuts off that hold it to the cylinder head, and we released a large 16 millimeter nut at the bottom that holds it to the block. There's several other components that are attached to the intake manifold, for example the throttle body, idle air control valve, the DESA valve, as well as some other vacuum components. You just need to systematically go through and remove those, or get them removed from the manifold. And if you're concerned about where things might go on the reassembly, just take some masking tape, mark the components, give yourself a small description as to where they go, and then just wiggle the manifold. See what's binding, see what's catching. Pay close attention to it. Don't force anything or break anything. And work your way through. And, you know, this works for pretty much all components. You just sort of got to be careful, be mindful of it as you're working through. So the fuel injector connectors are part of the harness and if you don't disconnect it from the fuel rail and the fuel injectors you're not going to be able to remove the intake manifold from the engine bay completely. So there's these small thin metal clips that fasten the connectors onto the fuel injectors. If you just take a pocket screwdriver, pop one side of those out, then use a small pry bar or flathead screwdriver and just sort of pop the connectors off you'll be able to remove that connector harness as a whole and you'll be able to freely take the intake manifold out of the engine bay give yourself a lot more room to take care of any other repairs as well as do the reseal on a bench or a flat surface So the manifold is out and you can see some coolant that's been sitting underneath the intake manifold. That's coming from those two hard plastic water pipes. They press into the engine with some O-rings. They get brittle, they fall apart. It's a pretty common repair anywhere around, you know, 120 to 200,000 miles. So I will give you a closer look in a little bit into where those exactly failed, but you can see how it routes and connects into a standard rubber hose with the BMW connection so in a minute we'll get those pulled out show the the exact location of where it failed as well as get the rest of this engine cleaned up Just as a precautionary measure, always clean off the cylinder head at the intake valves as well as get them covered up. One of the worst things you could have happen is something drops down in there and you're not aware of it. Next time you go to start the car, you're going to mash up some intake valves and you're in a world of hurt at that point. So 
just be cautious, throw some masking tape on there and call it a day. So here we're pulling the cooling fan and the fan shroud out of the way to get access to the upper and the lower radiator hose. This is the fan clutch wrench. I think it's like a 36 millimeter wrench. Use this in conjunction with a hammer to hit the nut on the cooling fan in a counterclockwise direction. This engine's serpentine belt spins in a clockwise direction if you're looking at the front bumper. So knock that in the opposite way, spin it off by hand, and you'll be able to have a lot more room to work in the front end. If you actually look closely, you can see there is a missing fan blade on the cooling fan that ended up turning into a future issue I had to chase down. So keep an eye out on the channel and I'll probably be doing a video to cover that diagnosis and repair as well. BMW coolant hose connectors can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, I always recommend pulling the clip out and then just use a pry bar, something like that, and hit the connector off in the direction that it's supposed to come off. You don't really want to apply any sideways or lateral pressure. Most of the connectors that they fit onto are plastic themselves, so just got to be kind of cautious. You're not breaking any thermostats or anything or a radiator when you're trying to pull the hoses out. Here I'm taking off the bottom bolt that holds on the Vanos oil line. It has a banjo bolt with two sealing washers. We're just getting that out of the way to give ourselves better access for the water pipes. And then we'll be able to get these water pipes out. You can see the left side just sort of presses in there. It's held in with a nut. Uh, this right side had a huge crack next to that bracket. So that was the cause of one of our coolant leaks. It was just hemorrhaging out. I wasn't even able to get a couple PSI into the system. So. Definitely a necessary replacement to turn this thing into any sort of a reliable car. Here we are getting that second water pipe out. You can see that left side isn't even held in with a nut. It just presses into place. And on this one, like all the other ones I've done, the tip of that pipe just snaps off inside the engine. So. If you are doing this job, make sure you get in there with an inspection mirror, swipe it with your finger, make sure there's no extra pipe material in there. I like to use this pick. I go in, pop the o-ring out, pop the piece of plastic out, and you're in good shape. We got brushes. To get in there with a piece of scotch Bright or emery cloth sandpaper is just a pain in the ass. I recommend getting some of these brushes. They connect into my electric drill. Just give it a good, you know, 10, 15 second pass. Get all that O-ring plastic material out of the sealing surface. It will save yourself a lot of trouble in the future and you will be way more sure that that water pipe is getting a good seal against that metal surface. Gotta use some schlub. On this one, I'm using Silglide, which is like a silicone grease type product in conjunction with this wet silicone spray. These two together are dynamite combo. I use them on practically everything, and it really helps get those O rings sealed in and keep them hydrated as time goes on.
like I'm dealing with here, if you order aftermarket parts, you're bound to run into an issue or two. For me, these water pipes, the fitment was a little off than factory, so I just needed to play around with the two bolts, make sure I got both brackets lined up before I snugged them down. So just a word of wisdom, if you are going to save the bucks like I did and go with a Euro cooling system pipe and coolant hose kit, uh, just be aware, sometimes they don't always fit as good as original equipment. So the water pipes are in, they are locked down, they are tight. Now we're going to start doing all of the other coolant hoses in this engine bay. I have no idea how many there are. I felt like I did, you know, at least eight of them. So I used the kit that I got off ECS Tuning, which was a complete cooling hose kit, and just started taking them apart piece by piece. If you got the lower radiator hose out, it's always a good time to replace the lower radiator hose temperature sensor. Uh, it's a wearable component. Had it out, might as well replace it. It's like an additional 10 bucks to the job. Now we're bleeding the cooling system, getting this thing topped up. That way we can stick the pressure tester on it and put some pressure into this cooling system, be able to visually observe those water pipes as well as the rest of the vehicle while we get this intake manifold slapped back on. So we are holding pressure, the cooling system is looking good so far, so we are going to leave this thing under pressure and we'll get cracking on resealing this intake manifold. So now we're getting that broken throttle body bolt out, got a pair of vice grips on it just to get it turned, and uh, this thing came out really easy, spun out by hand, so we will get that addressed soon. Now we're tearing into the breather, or the crankcase ventilation system. It is just a series of a bunch of plastic hoses that 
recirculate crankcase pressure back into the intake stream. They get super brittle. It's definitely a wear item on these cars if you're going to push them up past 200,000 miles. So just going through and systematically getting these hoses pulled off, we're going to replace them with all the hoses provided in the kit. So I'm popping this breather apart just to show you there is a spring-loaded diaphragm in there. That diaphragm tends to crack and tear around that outside edge, uh, causing vacuum issues. In this case, the breather is just fine. I just wanted to crack it open to show you the guts. I'd say the most challenging thing about this breather job is getting the pipes and the o-rings to sit properly. I like to use a lot of lube for this job. It can prevent you from rolling o-rings which can go unseen until you have the engine back together again. So I always recommend just hitting everything with a real good coat. It'll make the job go a lot smoother. So this car had some shot out vacuum caps on it. Nothing a quick run to the auto parts store can't fix. We need to get replacement vacuum caps as well as a new bolt for the throttle body. Luckily O'Reilly Auto Parts down the street had everything I needed. Just a quick little assorted vacuum kit as well as a new metric bolt and we are back in shape. One of them sits on the back of the manifold there as you can see where I just installed it. Another one of the caps sits on top of the breather. So something to keep in mind, if I'm gonna do all this work and put this manifold back in the car, I'm definitely gonna address any other little issue that could fail once I get it back in. Now I've reused these intake manifold gaskets before. These ones were still decent, however, for the sake of resealing this whole intake manifold, picked them up while I was down there, figured throw them in while we're here. So while I had the fan out, I noticed there was an exposed rib on the crank pulley and the AC compressor pulley. So I popped the AC belt off, it had a four rib belt on it, it needs a five rib belt. I grabbed a new belt while I was at the auto parts store just for some peace of mind and easy quick $15, $20 fix. The tensioner for the AC belt is mechanical. I think it's like a 13 millimeter nut on it. Just give it some tension with a ratchet. It'll loosen up and the belt will come right off.
so the manifold's going back in. I still have the car's cooling system under pressure. I know that the water pipes are holding really well. The car has not dropped in PSI at all, so I know the cooling system is actually pretty bulletproof right now. Gives me all the confidence in the world to be able to put this intake manifold back on and know that I'm not gonna have any issues with those coolant pipes underneath. Now the manifold's almost back in, took some finesse getting some connectors back into place. I leave it loose until I get this last plastic breather hose in. It connects the valve cover directly down to the breather and it's nice to have the manifold loose to give yourself a little extra room to get the bottom end pressed on by hand. Here we got our replacement throttle body bolts, just some standard bolts from the hardware store with the washer. Matched up the pitch. Bring your old bolt with you. You can match it up at the hardware store. That way you know you have the right fit. So we're snugging up the manifold, we're tightening up the top nuts. I would recommend a quarter inch ratchet, three eighths or half inch is just overkill. It'll prevent you from over torquing things and not using a torque wrench here, just going for the good old German torque spec, good and tight. So the manifold is snug. We're putting in the idle air control valve or thumper valve. I like to spray it out with some brake cleaner, twist it side to side. You can hear it thump around, make sure it's nice and clean. Lube up the tips with some silicone or a little bit of grease. It pops into a rubber fitting in the manifold. That way you get a nice good tight seal. You don't have to take it back out and worry about resealing it again. So now the lower intake boot's going in. I like to hold the hose clamp in place with a finger. I'm using a quarter inch drive ratchet here, just sort of a driver. That way I can use a six millimeter socket on the end. I prefer this over using a flathead screwdriver because the tool doesn't slip in and out of the hose clamp and just makes for a much better fit, easier time getting them installed. Now the DESA valve is going back in, same thing, lube up the o-rings, tighten them up snug, quarter inch ratchet, don't over torque it, 
a lot of the same things. Cars are fragile. There's lots of plastic, so just be gentle. That's all. So the upper intake boot is on. We got our various vacuum connections put back in place. All my little loose ends are tidied up and we are ready to fire this girl up. So she's running pretty good. We need to give the engine a couple of minutes to sort of get itself figured out. It's been running with unmetered air and vacuum leaks behind the mass airflow sensor for quite a while so we need to get those fuel trims back to where they need to be and let the engine electronics sort of get itself figured out and get that fuel trim dialed in again. So we got the engine running, she was getting nice and hot, and you can see we're getting some smoke off to the side of the valve cover. These valve covers sit kind of sideways and this gas gets shot out, so it's leaking down onto the exhaust manifold. Besides this thing running smooth, it's definitely something I want to take care of next, so keep an eye out on the channel, because there's going to be a video coming out pretty soon on how to get this valve cover gasket knocked out, and I'm going to show you the right way to do it. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Keep your eyes peeled, subscribe. I will have another video coming for you soon. Thanks again. Peace.